Have you ever noticed that a lot of rides throughout the four Disney World parks feel similar to each other? Whether that's a similar ride vehicle or just flat out the same ride with a slightly different theme? Hi, I'm Kate from Vacay in One Day and I'm here to see which rides are the best compared to their similar counterparts. I have my own opinion on which rides I prefer, but to keep this fair and objective, I polled 100 people online to select one of two rides that have something in common with each other. I created 10 categories for a total of 20 rides. For those of you who haven't been on these rides, hopefully this will help you prioritize your next Disney vacation. And for those who love these rides, let me know in the comments if you agree with the results. The first category of the Would You Rather Challenge is the Best Train Coaster. And the two rides going head to head are Seven Dwarves Mine Train and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. And yes, I recognize Expedition Everest is also a train coaster, but we'll be using that for a later comparison, so stay tuned. Seven Dwarves Mine Train is a very cute family coaster where you board a mine train to visit the dwarfs in their mine. It's part dark ride and part roller coaster. And what I love about this ride is how smooth it is. The ride vehicle allows forward movement that's expected from a roller coaster, but also has a side-to-side -side swinging movement as if you're in an actual minecart and yet it is still so smooth. I also think the dark ride section in the mine is my favorite part as you get to see the dwarfs and enjoy the bop hi-ho that will surely stay in your head all morning. And unlike its competitor, this ride is based on an IP, so your kids will automatically connect with the story. Both Seven Dwarves Mine Train and Big Thunder Mountain Railroad have fantastic queues that are filled with interactive elements for people to enjoy while they wait. The only negative thing about this ride is how short it is, especially compared to how long the wait time always is. The ride is about 3 minutes and a good amount of time of that is spent as the dark ride section, where the wait time is usually around 80 minutes. Okay, moving to his competitor, Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is part of Disney's classic mountain rides and is incredibly iconic. The ride takes you through a small mining town that was destroyed by a flash flood. And although this ride is a family coaster only going a max speed of 35 miles per hour, it definitely packs a punch, and the ride restraints totally add to the thrill level as you slide back and forth in the cart as you whip around the turns. When I worked at Disney, I was part of the team who implemented the interactive elements in the queue, so these will always have a special place in my heart over Seven Dwarfs. This ride is also 3 minutes long. The entire time of that is spent as the roller coaster, and this ride even has three separate lift hills, which makes it feel a lot longer than Seven Dwarfs. It also has an average wait time of 40 minutes, which is half the average of Seven Dwarfs, so it's definitely a better bang for your buck, so to speak. I really can't find a negative with this ride, except it may be a little rough for some people, so if you don't like a bit of the rattling feel, sit towards the front. Okay, time to see which train came out on top. Big Thunder Mountain Railroad is the winner, with a preference of 57% to 43% for Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. The second category is Star Wars Simulator Ride, where we compare Star Tours The Adventures Continue and Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run. As the name would suggest, both are simulator rides and both are themed to Star Wars, and both found in Hollywood Studios. The biggest difference is the first is Old School Star Wars and the second is New School Star Wars. Star Tours takes guests on a rather bumpy ride across the galaxy. The ride has a lot of rewritability because each ride consists of 4 out of 21 different journeys and the ride sequence is totally randomized, allowing for 700 different possible ride experiences. The ride vehicle is similar to other simulator attractions where there are 4 rows of 10 people and the entire little theater moves in unison. But because of the ride mechanics, if you sit towards the edge of the theater, you will have a much bumpier ride than if you're seated towards the middle. Fair warning, this could easily make you sick. Smuggler's Run is also rewritable for a different reason. While the story you watch in the simulator is the same every time, it has video game-esque qualities where you control the movement and ending of the ride. Each ride vehicle fits six guests and each person is assigned a role. Two are pilots who actually control where your ship goes, Two are gunners, whose guns actually shoot things on screen. And two are engineers, who will press a button that does who knows what. An upside for this ride is that if you're traveling with a larger family, you could potentially have the entire ride to yourselves, which is a great bonding experience as you try and win your smuggling mission. Fair warning, this one could also easily make you get sick, but that goes for all screen-based attractions. Well, 
The winner of this category with the larger disparity between the two is Millennium Falcon Smuggler's Run with 84% to 16%. Moving on, we have the best Magic Kingdom spinning flat ride with Dumbo the Flying Elephant against the Magic Carpets of Aladdin. Yes, I also know Astro Orbiter is a spinning flat ride at Magic Kingdom, but with it being on top of a building that you have to take an elevator to get to, I mean, come on, that's a totally different ride and not part of this comparison. Dumbo and Aladdin are virtually the same exact ride, besides a few minor differences. Dumbo is an opening day attraction for Magic Kingdom where you sit in a Dumbo ride vehicle and spin around, as you control the height of your Dumbo. It's the first and obviously iconic version of the spinning flat rides, and it also has a really cool interactive queue where your kids can play in the indoor circus themed playground while you wait for it to be your turn to ride. A genius idea in my opinion. The Magic Carpets of Aladdin is also a spinning flat ride that you ride in a magic carpet and you also control your height which is important because there is a camel on one side that will spit water on you as you fly by. This ride vehicle has two rows where Dumbo only has one, but only one row controls the height, so be mindful of that if you sit with a different family and your kids really want to control the height. Well, the people have spoken, and with 72% of the votes, Dumbo the Flying Elephant wins. The fourth category is a flying simulator attraction, and the contenders are Soarin' Around the World in Epcot and Avatar Flight of Passage in Animal Kingdom. This one is a hard one to choose in my opinion, as both are a top tier ride in each of their parks. Soarin' is a flight motion simulator where you will be lifted up to simulate a hang gliding flight over 13 locations in 6 continents, including sites like the Great Wall of China, the Pyramids in Egypt, and the Eiffel Tower in Paris. While both attractions in this category are known for great smells throughout the ride, Soren has a fantastic variety based on the location you're in. The ride is very relaxing and stunning as you slowly soar over some of the wonders of the world. It is a must-do for me every time I go to Epcot. The second flight simulator is Avatar Flight of Passage where you will fly on a banshee to soar over Pandora. This ride is truly incredible, especially for a simulator where the ride's just based off a of screen. The ride vehicle itself is so neat because you sit on a somewhat motorbike shaped seat that is supposed to be a banshee and throughout the ride it expands and collapses between your legs so you really feel like it's an animal. The ride uses effects similar to Soren with different smells and water that sprays in tandem with the story to add to the immersion. And lastly while this ride always has a very long wait, the queue itself is my favorite amongst all Disney queues and the ride is 4.5 minutes so you don't walk off feeling like it wasn't worth the wait. I absolutely love soaring through Pandora in the sounds, the music, the effects, they are all amazing. Okay, the winner of the flying simulator is Avatar Flight of Passage at 79%, a clear winner over Soren. Another really hard choice is our fifth category, Trackless Ride, where we have Remy's Ratatouille Adventure going against Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Rail. Not only are they both new additions to the parks, I can't overlook the irony of the main characters of each are a rat and a mouse. Remy's is a 3D trackless dark ride based on the Ratatouille movie where you will be shrunken down to the size of a rat and move throughout the restaurant. On this ride you will smell various smells and other immersive effects to enhance the experience. My favorite scene is when you go under a hot oven and you really feel some heat. Overall, I think this is a fantastic addition to Epcot and World Pavilion, and the wait times reflect the popularity of this ride. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Rail took over the location of the great movie ride, and while I do think that does hurt the attraction's likeness, this ride is still absolutely adorable. It is the first ever ride to feature the two iconic mice, and the set designs are fantastic, with my favorite scene being Daisy's Dance Studio. The queue is also very cute and magical as you step into the land of cartoon. And while I'm sad to see the great movie ride go, Mickey and Minnie's is a success in my opinion, but let's see who comes out on top. With a score of 54 to 46, it is Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. The sixth category compares the two clamshell Omnimover rides, Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid, and The Seas with Nemo and Friends which are incredibly similar in not only the ride vehicle, but the whole entire aesthetic of the rides themselves. Both take you through a condensed version of the movies while you look at somewhat cool, somewhat outdated animatronics. The Little Mermaid outshines Nemo when it comes to music because that ride is filled with bops. 
Plus the giant Ursula animatronic is super cool and ginormous, which kind of makes this a must ride just to see her. Nemo has a really cool sea turtle scene and the jellyfish totally look real. Neither typically get a long way and are both great filler attractions, but which is rated higher than the other? Under the Sea, Journey of the Little Mermaid, and it wasn't even close, with 73% over Nemo. Sorry little guy, maybe next time. It's time to see what boat water ride people would rather enjoy. Pirates of the Caribbean versus Frozen Ever After. Both rides you board a boat, experience a drop, and have a decent chance of getting a tiny bit wet. Unlike other boat rides at Disney like It's a Small World or Living with the Land. Pirates of the Caribbean is an iconic ride at Magic Kingdom where you see Captain Jack Sparrow and other familiar faces as you float through various scenes of piracy. The scenes are fun, the dialogue is captivating, and the smells entice you to keep coming back for more rides. For many people, this is their favorite ride in Magic Kingdom and I totally see why. Frozen Ever After is also a boat ride and has a drop, but that's about all these two rides have in common. Where Pirates is dark and ominous, Frozen is sweet and magical. Those that love Frozen will be happy to know that they will see all their favorite characters in the ride and of course will hear the main bop Let It Go. The animatronics in this ride are pretty cool and more modernized than the ones in Pirates, but in some lights it looks like their faces don't always match their bodies. Well, time to see who the winner is. My vote is whichever one I don't get wet on. 70 to 30, Pirates of the Caribbean is the winner. Are you like me and are competitive? Well, this next category is for you with the best shooter style ride, Buzz Lightyear Ranger Spin or Toy Story Mania. Buzz Lightyear Ranger Spin is a classic shooter style ride where you are an omni mover and you use your gun to shoot at different targets as you work to defeat Emperor Zerg. Each vehicle freely spins as you control where you want your vehicle to face to get the best shot. My only complaint with this ride is it's hard to know which targets are worth more because they're all the same design, where the Disneyland version are different shapes with different points. Toy Story Mania, the second shooter style ride, is also themed to Toy Story but is more unique as it's a shooter simulator where you strap on a pair of 3D glasses and use a plopper instead of a gun to hit different targets on the screen. What I love about this one is that there are different levels, each getting harder than the previous. But the thing I don't love about this ride is, wow, the arm that does the plopping will surely feel like it wants to fall off by the time you're done. Well, even though they are both different in terms of ride experience, it was hard to pick a winner. With 53% over 47%, Toy Story Mania barely came out on top. In the ninth category, we see if people would rather ride the iconic Tomorrowland coaster, Space Mountain, or Tron Light Cycle Run, the newest Tomorrowland coaster. Space Mountain is a ride that almost every person who's been to Disney has been on, a total classic Magic Kingdom ride where riders experience an indoor coaster in the dark. The ride experience takes riders up to space and while the, the ride isn't very fast, it feels faster and more thrilling because it's entirely in the dark and you never know what twist or dip lies ahead of you. I prefer to ride in the front so that one, you truly can't see where you're going, and two, you aren't really straddling anyone as the ride vehicle is a little awkward and it's kind of hard to get into and out of. Tron Light Cycle Run is part outdoor, part indoor roller coaster that features a 0 to 60 ish launch at the beginning. The ride vehicle is very unique and designed to mimic a motorcycle, and it adds to the thrill level to sit on that type of ride vehicle, but it can be a bit uncomfortable or not accommodating for all body types. I highly recommend riding this at night as you shoot out in the outdoor section with all the neon blue lights on. And the outdoor part is better than the indoor part as the ride slows down significantly once you go inside and as soon as you start it seems to be over in a second. People have complained about the ride feeling too short, but let's see overall do people prefer the old classic or the new modern. And with 74% of the votes, Space Mountain beats out Tron Light Cycle Run. And our last category is comparing backwards coasters with our two competitors, Expedition Everest versus Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Both are incredible coasters with fantastic cues, immersive stories, and two of the best Disney rides in my opinion. Expedition Everest is a mostly outdoor roller coaster with a few sections inside the mountain and takes riders on an expedition through the Himalayas where they may encounter a Yeti. 
The backwards section is incredibly fun as a Yeti rips up the normal track. And this ride also has a very high capacity, so while the ride is popular at Animal Kingdom, it doesn't typically get too long of a wait. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is Epcot's most recent attraction, and wow, this ride is fantastic. It's an indoor omni coaster that features a backwards launch. And it also randomly plays one of six popular songs like Conga or Disco Inferno, which totally adds to the rewritability as people want to quote unquote catch them all. While this ride doesn't go upside down, it is incredibly thrilling and one that you should never miss. Okay, the last winner of Would You Rather is Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at 63% over Expedition Everest at 37%. Wow, were you surprised by the results? Let me know in the comments which rides you would rather ride if given the choice. And as always, if you liked this video, please subscribe as this really helps out my channel. Thanks for watching. Bye!